In the last episode, we learned how to protect our database when a user goes to your website and inserts data directly from your website into the database. And the reason we need to do this is because it's actually possible for people to go to your website and when you allow for them to actually write something themselves that then gets sent to the database, is that we allow for people to actually write code, which will then get read by the database and we actually allow for people to mess up the database. So the user could potentially go into a database and delete or change or see things that they shouldn't see inside the database. So we need to make sure we protect the database inside our website from what's called SQL injection, which is when people do actually go into a website and write something inside an input, like inside a form, and sends code inside your database. Now in the previous episode, we talked about how to protect the database by using MySQLi, which is what we did right here by using the MySQLi function inside PHP. Now there's a much better way we can do this, which is not using MySQLi, by using something called prepared statements. Now the idea behind prepared statements is that when we have some kind of SQL statement like the one we have down here, we can actually go in and say, well, we don't know what the data is actually gonna be yet, which means we're gonna go ahead and add placeholders instead of the actual variables down here. We then send the SQL code to the database to actually parse it, which means we're actually gonna run the code inside the database. And then afterwards, later on, we send the actual data to the database and replace the placeholders inside our SQL statements. And because when we do actually send the data later on, we use a different protocol inside the database, the database won't actually read the placeholders as code inside the database, it's just gonna see it as characters. Now today, prepared statements is actually seen as the preferred method when you do actually connect to a database and either need to see stuff or insert stuff into the database. So once you do actually start making websites that need to actually be uploaded online, then it's recommended that you do actually use prepared statements, okay? Now what we're gonna go ahead and do in this episode is first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to use prepared statements when it comes to selecting data inside the database. And then afterwards, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it when we want to insert data inside the database. So a couple of episodes ago, we talked about how to select data directly from the website, which I believe was the first episode where we did actually do anything inside the actual website that had anything to do with the database. So if you guys want the lesson files from that previous episode, I recommend you guys go back a couple episodes to where we do actually learn how to select data directly from the website and download the lesson file so you guys can actually follow this lesson here if you guys want to. So this is the file that we had a couple of episodes ago where we just simply inside the index file, went in, selected data and spit it out inside the website. And what we did here is we just selected everything from inside the users table and spit out the username of every single user. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and say we want to select a specific user inside the database. What we're gonna do first here is we're gonna go ahead and say we have a select statement that selects everything from users where user underscore UID is equal to a specific name. So right now inside my database, if we were to take a look at it, you guys can see that right now I have just one user inside the database called admin. Now I want to select admin inside my website. So what we could do here is inside the select statement, say we want to select a user ID called single quotes admin. So we're to save this and then refresh the browser. You guys should see that we get admin. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to say that, well, we want to include a placeholder instead of the actual name of the user we want to select from the database. So I'm going to go ahead and say question mark. And then afterwards, I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything we have in here, except for the while loop down inside our check down here. So I'm just gonna delete everything except for the while loop. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace all this code with prepared statements instead of using MySQLi, which is what we used before, okay? So underneath the SQL statement, and we can actually go ahead and write a comment here just so we know exactly what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we just created a template, which we'll then use later on when we do actually have the actual data that it needs to insert instead of the placeholder. So we're gonna say we just created a template and then after we create the template we need to actually create the prepared statement so what we're going to do is we're going to say we have a comment that says create a prepared statement which i'm going to go ahead and say is a variable called stmt which stands for statements i'm going to set it equal to a php function called my sqli underscore stmt underscore init which stands for initialize so basically what we're starting up here is a prepared statement. Now, right now inside this prepared statement here, we need to tell it which connection we want to use to actually do this inside the database. So what we do actually have is inside our dbh file, we have a connection to the database called variable con. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to use this connection inside our statement down here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it inside as a parameter inside the function. So after creating the prepared statement, I'm going to go underneath here. And now we need to actually prepare the prepared statement using the SQL statement we have up here, the template. So I'm going to go ahead and say we want to prepare the prepared statement. And we do that using another PHP function called MySQLI underscore STMT underscore prepare. Now, before we actually continue, we can actually go ahead and create a check here that checks if this prepared statement can actually work using the SQL statement we have up here, using the template that we created beforehand. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and say we have an if statement. And inside the condition of the if statement, I'm going to insert my function down here called mysqli underscore statement underscore prepare insert it inside of here and then inside the parameters of this function i can actually go ahead and insert the statement that we created previously so i'm going to insert it as the first parameter and then the second parameter is going to be the actual sql template that we created up here so i'm going to paste it in as parameter number two so now what we just did here is we went ahead and said okay if this function here does actually succeed it should go ahead and run the code inside the if statement now when it comes to php code we want to always check for failure before we check for success so what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and insert a exclamation mark right before the function which now means that instead of checking if it succeeds we now check if it failed so if this does actually fail we should write some kind of message inside the if statement so we could actually echo some kind of string that says SQL statement failed. Just so we know what actually happened if we were to actually fail using this SQL statement, okay? So afterwards, we want to say, well, we have an if statement, then else, if this actually succeeded, then we want to run the code inside the else statement. So now what we did so far is we did actually create the template, we did actually create a prepared statement using the connection to the database, and then afterward, we prepared the prepared statement using the template. So what we want to do now is we want to actually bind the parameters we want to replace with the placeholders inside the template. And we do that by going inside the else statement. We create a comment called bind parameters to the placeholders or holders since we only have one in here. And underneath here, we're going to go ahead and create a PHP function called my SQLI underscore STMT underscore bind underscore param which stands for parameters parentheses semicolon and inside the parentheses we need to have a couple of different parameters now the first one is going to be the actual statement that we prepared up here called stmt so we're going to go ahead and say we have variable stmt comma space then the second parameter is going to be an indicator for the placeholder we insert inside the template up here so right now we have a question mark instead of the actual data so what i'm going to do is inside as the second parameter i'm going to say double quotes and then i'm going to go ahead and write s which means that right now we only have one placeholder inside the statement if i were to have a second placeholder such as if i were to also check if user underscore first which is the first name was equal to question mark and again, we would also add something like and in between here. Then right now, we would actually check for two different factors inside our database. We would check for the username and the first name. So right now, we do actually have two different placeholders. In that case, we would actually add a second S inside the double quotes. Now, in this episode, we're not going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete what I just wrote here. But just to show you guys, we would actually do that. Now, the third parameter inside this function here is going to be the actual data that we want to insert instead of the placeholder up here. Now we haven't actually created that data yet because in some cases like inside a typical website we could actually allow for people to write something and then search for it inside the database but because right now we just want to select some kind of user using some kind of name i'm going to create a variable at the very top here which i'm going to call data just to give it some kind of name i'm going to set it equal to double quotes which is a string called admin so right now, data is equal to admin, which is the name we want to search for inside the database or the username they want to search for. So I'm going to set this S down here, which right now represents the placeholder inside the SQL statement. I'm going to say we want to replace it with this variable data we created up here by saying that the third parameter is going to be variable data. 
Now, if we were to have two different placeholders and we did actually have the second as, the way we would do this is we would actually create a fourth parameter, which would then be equal to whatever variable we created for the second parameter or the second placeholder inside the statement here, okay? But right now, because we just have one, I'm just going to include one inside the parameters down here. So now that we did this, we can actually execute the actual statement inside our database. So essentially what we're actually doing here is we're saying that we have this SQL statement, we then run it inside the database, and after it's been passed inside the database, we then include the actual data that needs to be used instead of the placeholders. So underneath here, what we're gonna go ahead and say is that we want to actually run this SQL statement, but using the parameters we gave it down here, and the way we're gonna do that is first of all, let's actually go ahead and create a comment that says run parameters inside database. Then we're gonna go ahead and say we have a PHP function called mysqli underscore stmt underscore execute parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, we just need to include the statement that we just prepared like so which means that right now we actually ran this line of code, which had all the data inside it needed to replace inside the placeholders inside the database. Now, after doing this, we still need to get the actual data. So underneath here, what we're gonna go ahead and say is we want to take the results from the executed statement and insert them inside a variable. So right now we want to say we have a variable called result, which is equal to a PHP function called my SQLI underscore stmt underscore get underscore result parentheses semicolon then inside the parentheses we need to actually get the data from inside the statement we just prepared and then after we do this we can actually take the while loop that we had down here and just simply put it inside our else statement like so so right now we just did the exact same thing as we did in the previous episode we just went in and selected data but instead we did it using prepared statements, which is much safer to use inside a website. So just to go ahead and check what we did in here, if we were to refresh the browser, you guys can see we still get admin inside our browser. Now we'll actually go back inside the code and say we want to search for not admin, but John, because we don't have that inside the database, you guys will notice that we don't get any kind of results. So what we want to do now is now that we learned how to actually select data from inside the database, now we want to actually insert data inside the database. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the lesson material from the previous episode where we learned how to insert data inside the database, which is right after the episode where we learned how to select data. So if you guys are interested, you can just go ahead and go back to that episode and download the lesson files if you want to follow this lesson here. Now, when it comes to inserting data inside a database using prepared statements, it's very much the same as we did previously when we wanted to use prepared statements in order to select data from inside the database. So down inside our insert statement down here inside the SQL variable, I'm going to go ahead and go inside my values and replace the first, last, email, UID, and password. And I'm going to replace these with a question mark which means that right now we actually created placeholders, which we're then gonna give the SQL statement later on when we do actually create a prepared statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete my MySQLi query down here because we don't actually need it. And then instead, I'm gonna go ahead and create a prepared statement just like we did previously. So I'm gonna say we have a variable stmt, which is equal to MySQLi underscore stmt underscore init parentheses. And I'm gonna do this using the connection to the database, which again is variable con, which I created inside a separate document. I'm gonna insert it inside my parameter. And then underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this prepared statement using this SQL code up here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a check, just like we did previously, where we check for failure first. So we're gonna say exclamation mark, and then we're gonna use a function called mysqli underscore stmt underscore prepare parentheses and inside the parentheses we need to actually write that correctly like so then inside the parentheses we need to include first of all the statement up here and then the second parameter is going to be the sql statement now if we do actually get an error message because it can actually run this sql statement inside the database then it's going to go ahead and run a piece of code that says echo a string called 
SQL error or something. You can just go ahead and write whatever you want in here. It's just for us to know if there was some kind of error. So after the if statement, I'm going to say we have an else statement. And inside the else statement, we want to actually bind the parameters to the placeholders inside the insert statement, just like we did in the previous part. So what we need to do here is we need to create the function called my sqli underscore stmt underscore bind underscore param because we need to bind the parameters to the actual statements. So inside the function parameters, we're going to say we want to use the statement that we created up here. And then the second parameter is going to be the indicator of how many parameters we want to bind to the template we created up here which in this case is going to be one, two, three, four, five, because we have five different placeholders inside the SQL statement. So I'm going to say S, 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 which is five S's. Then afterwards, we're going to say comma, space. And then we need to insert the actual variables that we want to replace with the placeholders inside the SQL statement. So the first one is going to be variable first. So I'm going to say variable first, comma, then variable last, comma, and then we just paste in the rest of them, which is email, comma, UID, comma, and a password, like so. So now that we told the statement what the parameters should be inside the placeholders, let's actually go ahead and run the code inside the database. So we can actually use the, the function called my SQLI underscore STMT underscore execute parentheses colon and then inside the parentheses we're going to say we have variable statements we're going to save it and then try to run it inside our browser so i'm going to go and refresh and type in something inside the inputs i'm going to say john doe email is going to be john at gmail.com then i'm going to go ahead and give him a username called john 23 and his password is going to be test123. I'm going to say sign up. And then I'm going to go inside my database, refresh it. And now you guys can see we get John Doe inside the database. So this is how we can actually use prepared statements inside our website when we want to either select or insert data inside a database. And it's the exact same method if you were to, instead of inserting data, if you want to change data or use any of the other SQL statements we have inside SQL, you know, to actually interact with the database. Now, one thing I want to mention before we end off this episode is that it's very important that you guys understand that we used functions in PHP meant for procedural programming inside PHP. So if you were to use object or into programming, you don't use the exact same functions as we did inside this episode. And again, if you guys are confused about what procedural programming and object-oriented programming is, don't worry too much about it. If you want to learn object-oriented programming, I do have a course on it if you guys want to check it out. But the important thing is that you guys just need to know that we've been using procedural programming in this course here. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.